Hi, I'm Wendy Yellen, and in this video blog, I'm going to introduce you to the beautiful work called eidetic imagery, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about it and how it can help, how it addresses places in us that are so rock bottom foundationally stuck in us that one, we may not even know it. We may not even realize it. We might be insistently blind to it. And also that are the very things that keep us from feeling and living and being in our life in the ways that we want to. So no matter how much personal work you've done, in my opinion, this work can take you to a different place because of the way the very unique system of how we work with the mind and how that automatically translates into change. It doesn't even translate. It just is change. And I'm going to talk to you more about that. What is eidetics? So eidetics is a kind of psychotherapy, you could say, although I don't like to call it that because it's, to me, a horse of a different color. It's it's so different than all the many forms of psychotherapy that I've studied and used as a uh, when I got my master's in social work and also uh, all the postgraduate training that I did in different ways to help people change. This works with the mind and our stuckness and our obstacles in a way which is kind of can take you aback because it's so real and it's so visceral. So it's a kind of psychotherapy. Uh, it is a process in our consciousness, which I'll explain in a bit, that the ancient Greeks understood. Now, they did not use eidetic imagery for therapy that we know of, but they did understand that these eidetic images are in our mind and are so powerful that they called eidetic images gifts from the gods. That's how special they thought they were. So I'm going to assume that you've tried and experienced lots of ways to help you shift into being more of who you came here to be. And that you've had some success with most of them. And that you're still wanting something more. Maybe there's a part of you that hopes and prays that there's a way to be in this world as yourself in a, a flowing, gracious, sensual, delicious way without having to twist yourself into a pretzel. But that you don't know quite how to get there and one thing you're pretty darn sure of on some level right now is if when you think about it is that your thinking mind isn't getting you there. No matter how many times you tell yourself, go with the flow, be have a loving heart, um, go out there and network <laughs> or whatever it is, no matter how many times you tell yourself the common wisdom you don't quite get there. You can't quite, you have to kind of gird your loins, like make yourself do these things and it doesn't feel real or true or maybe you just even can't get yourself to do them. So let's go back. So we have eidetics known by the ancient Greek. It's an ancient Greek word from eidos. And not used as a therapy, but developed as a psychotherapy by Dr. Akter Asin, who passed away relatively recently, but uh, created this work and mm, I think something like over 30 books. I'm not talking about books that have a one idea that they spend 192 pages on, but one idea 
pretty much in every sentence a new idea. He was very thoughtful, very learned, a, ph- a, psych- a psychologist, a philosopher, a scientist, a poet, a painter, a an, an incredible, incredible man who was also my teacher and friend and mentor. So what Dr. Asa discovered about the way that uh, our conscious, our deeper consciousness works is that a, there's a way of using the mind differently. So normally, let's say we might say, Mm, all right, I want to, okay, we'll take me doing this video, which maybe you are needing to be in front of people or making a video or going to networking or, you know, when you go to stuff like that, for most, for most of us, if you're not used to it, especially stuff comes up. How are you going to look? How are you going to act? Will other people appreciate what you're trying to do? Are you going to mess up? Um, Is it going to matter to anybody? Will you be able to connect with somebody if you're networking? Will you be able to make your point? Mm, Where will it go? Will you be successful? The mind just like trips out on these, you know, way out there in what one of my teacher calls the um, crack den of your mind. So we think we need to, let's go with networking rather than making a video. Let's say you think you need to be a certain way when you go networking. So you try to put yourself into this frame of mind because you think that's how you're supposed to get yourself into the best networking self that you have. And yet, that, even though it makes sense, It's really hard to do. It's really hard to make yourself act or certainly feel a certain way. Uh, If you, Bonnie Raitt, you may have heard of her, this singer, songwriter. She says you can't make the heart feel something it won't. It's so true. You cannot make yourself feel a certain way. I, I don't agree with the fake it till you make it. I think that's people do that because they don't know what else to do. You, you, There's a difference between what you're aware of in yourself, how you feel in yourself, and then what you're, tr- and if you're, th- and what you're trying to portray. If there's a difference there, what people will feel is that you're trying to portray something. They'll just pick it up. They may not know how or why, but they will. What eidetics does, though, is it works with the mind differently. First, It works with images that are inside of us. These images can be vague or vivid. They have nothing to do with visualizations, but they're they're created at times of difficulty, trauma, great joy, great sorrow. They could there a lot of them are around the dinner table because a lot of us spent in my generations anyway, a lot of us spent time together with our family at the dinner table. And so we have these images that come to us that contain a visual aspect. They also contain feelings. And I'm going to give you an example in a moment. And there are layers and layers of meanings. But the difference is with eidetics that you don't go straight to the meaning. In fact, you often don't go to the meaning at all. You keep looking at these images that are already there inside of you. I'll give you an example in a moment. And as you watch, you're, you're feeling them to a certain extent. Sometimes those feelings are blocked, but there's usually at least some feeling there. You don't have to push yourself to feel. And your mind may go to multiple layers of meaning. Because our minds are so rigid, especially let's say we remember something, because an eidetic image is not history at all. It's nothing about history. So we have this image, let's say at the dining room table. I'm just going to let myself see my own image. Um, it's coming to me about the, at the dining room table. 
and I can see my father, my mother, my little brother, my sister. And it's fairly vague right now. It's fun for me to have my brother over here. But the most, the part of my image that pulls me the most is my father. He seems very solid, very present to me, and there's a something going on in my stomach. I'm feeling anxious in my stomach and a little bit wor and worried and uptight. And all my attention is on him with a little bit of the fun of my young brother here. And my mother, who's there, who's actually in this image, um, soft and lovely, I can't feel her as much because my attention is focused on my dad and I'm worried about what's going to come from him. Now, that's just a snippet of an eidetic image. Now, what there are many things about this is, uh, that are important. One is it shows you how your mind is focused on, well, in this case, my mind is focused on a very negative place that I'm carrying inside me. My father isn't here right now, right? He's not even alive. But inside me, I've got this strong focus on what's going to happen next. It's, all, it's so strong in my belly. And there's something lovely here with my mother, but I can't relate to it. I can't give myself over to it because I'm more worried about this part over here, my dad. So because these images aren't about my parents, they're about what's going on inside me, even though that image is fairly accurate for certain times, I can see how hard it is for me to allow myself. So I'm just going to try at this moment. I'm going to show you a different aspect. I'm going to see if I can let myself see and feel my mother and to the exclusion of my father, which is really hard right now. But when I do allow that in just a little bit, I feel like softness and love in my heart. And I'm so glad my mom is there, which is kind of amazing because her images start out very negative for me. But for right, right now, I feel relief of that over-focus on what's going to happen next in my dad, from my dad. Now, why is this important? So, for example, when I enter into certain aspects of my life, that might be my filter. My dad might be my filter. Like, what's going to happen next? Tension. I'm not going to do it right. He's going to explode. That kind of stuff. You know, you can even see I'm just getting more and more like this. Whereas when I'm seeing my mom here, I'm accessing more love, actually, and beauty and softness and kindness. So those are different aspects of me that are coming through. That's what eidetics does. It First, it shows you by seeing the image and allowing all the different feelings to come through and different ways that I work with the image. That's just one out of thousands. Um, it starts to open the neural pathways in me, so for in this example, in me towards that part of me that is soft and loving and way more relaxed and less to the part of me that is waiting for the next shoe to drop and carries that with me. Again, this isn't about my parents. They're not here. It's about me and the way my mind works. So the the huge contribution of eidetics is what are you seeing and what are you feeling and multiple layers of meaning. Whereas every other system that I know of that I've studied starts in the head or in the body and deals period stop. And we're dealing with not regurgitating memory, not regurgitating history, not dealing really with 
history per se, but dealing with the way we take it in and the way it sits in our body and the way it determines how we act right now. So, for example, I was working with, um, a couple times I've worked with mothers who felt really concerned. In this case, the two I'm thinking of, really concerned with their young adult sons. And while we watch this interaction in an image, instead of only talking about it, both moms could feel how their over-concern for their son, which they couldn't help, but their over-concern for their son was really being communicated on energetic levels to the son. It was making the son less... It was ma- they. It made them less accessible to their son. It made it less, more difficult for them to be able to support their son, because he could see the worry on their face, and he could experience the worry, and he couldn't really take in their help because there was so much agitation and worry in the parent, in the mother. Now this makes so much sense, right? It, it, it's so obvious when I talk about it. But when you're in the throes of something like this, it's not obvious at all. And even if you think about it and you think, okay, well, my son can feel how nervous I am. So then what do you try to do? Try to be less nervous? Well, if you're really nervous and if it really has roots in for decades inside you related to many other things because inside you, you're just going to be putting a grip on the nervousness And underneath, it's going to still be felt by everyone around you, including you. If you have any sensitivity and to what I'm talking about, you know, you you know, for yourself that um, you've you've seen this for yourself in your life. I talked in other videos, other vlogs about how we prevent ourselves from having the thing that we want the most. Now you can see this in a kind of gross way, big way in uh, things like New Year's Eve's resolution, New Year's resolutions, which probably you don't do anymore if you ever did, but you may. That they, people will want to do something and then a day, a week, for sure, or a month later, no, no, it's like not achievable anymore, not even a focus. It's forgotten generally. Or probably more something that you're doing, um, have an intention or a desire, and maybe it's even a spiritually connected desire where you want to be in the world differently. But then you see or hear or feel yourself doing the exact opposite. So wanting to have a loving heart and a loving presence, a loving awareness, and then seeing the stuff that just blurts out of your mouth or the judgment that comes up in your mind. And even if you don't say it, you're feeling it. And those things can be like knee-jerk reactions And we can try to stifle them. But from my perspective, what's so much better is to be able to intervene in this deep place that I'm talking about where they don't grow in you as much, okay? As much. They don't grow in you as much. I use an example with myself, with my husband, So we've been together about 40 years, and I am not saying this to joke around. I, I always, I thought for sure I was always right and he was always wrong. It was just kind of a given. <laughs> it sounds terrible, I know, but, it was, but that's how I felt. And I was constantly criticizing him out loud and in my mind, very much like my mom did to my dad and 
he made it very clear that that was not a good thing to do, but I kept doing it anyway, because after all, he clearly needed my help to be a better person. <laughs> I'm laughing, but you know, you know that how painful that is when you see things like that in yourself. And I wasn't able to let in, I wasn't able to let in his love. I, so I wanted it, but every part of me was pushing him away in the guise of trying to have a better marriage weird right but that's what we do so for me and I I really almost never worked on my marriage in my eidetics mostly I was working on um, my business and who I was being in my business and but that's one of the great things about eidetics is it flows into all the aspects of your life because of course they're all you so what started to happen is I, I literally could see myself feel his connecting with me and actually start responding to it instead of shutting it down because it wasn't good enough or because it wasn't being expressed the way I thought it should be. And because of that, I started feeling his love for me, which I hadn't felt in those ways, and my love for him. And then I started noticing things like he was singing around the house. And I didn't know, had he always been singing and been this happy? Or had we squashed that in him and that was coming back? I also started noticing and appreciating how funny he is and letting myself laugh instead of only being irritated at all the ways he wasn't who I thought he should be. And I am not exaggerating. I found that despite the fact that I had been working in so many different ways with different therapies and interventions and things like that, studying them as a master's in social work and then experiencing them and then studying other other modalities so many modalities and I when I really had my first experience I was like inside myself I thought oh my god this is what I've been looking for I did I hoped it was possible and now I think it might be but I was so skeptical at first because I was in my head and it really, really slowed me down. But even though I fought all the way, I was one of the most resistant clients you could be and still be a client. The way that my mind was being focused differently, just that helped, softened, eased, eased me, especially in the ways I was against myself. Now, we're going to be working in future vlogs. I'm going to be creating uh, weekly vlogs, actually. I'll probably create a couple of times so you'll see me in the same blouse. <laughs> and in each one, I'm going to help you get to what's really going on and help you move away from that. We're going to help, help not move away from it, but dissolve your resistance to what's trying to come through you which is more creativity, more sensuality, more a sense of greater real confidence, more willingness, more energy. One of my clients has so much more energy right now to create her business. She doesn't feel exhausted all the time. So each week we're going to work with a different concept or a different topic. I'm just checking my notes here. Um, so... If you have uh, any questions or any comments you want to make straight to me, then just send them to info at wendyyellen.com and, and I'll do my best to take a look and maybe even make a future vlog about it. So there's my introduction to eidetics. There's so much more to say, but for now, let's leave it here and I'll see you in our next connection. <laughs>